What's up guys? Welcome back to the Summit 8 SEA qualifiers. Today we're going to have both semi-final matches. Execration first going up against Mineski. And then after that we're going to have Fnatic and TNC. So it should be a pretty premium day. Yes, the finals are going to be played tomorrow. So if you're looking forward to that, well, be patient. Be patient because we're going to have one of these teams in the finals. That's for damn sure. I'm Mike Lowe. going to be your caster. For this game, I know guys, X God is gone. Not my fault. He's doing something with quote unquote real life while I'm sitting here casting Dota like a real baller. Shout out to whoever got the ticket sorted out for the Summit 8. Also, shout out to both these two teams who are here 15 minutes early, which is astounding. I mean, like, how are we supposed to actually cast Dota when everyone's punctual? It makes no sense to me. I can't wrap my head around it. But for me personally, been a damn long time since I've been able to cast some SEA Dota. Uh, just doesn't line up well. I'm on a 12-hour time shift. I'm literally on the other side of the world. So it doesn't really work out all that often. But uh, you know what? When it does, it is entertaining as hell. And these teams, their style of play, their just quality of play is clean as hell. Like, I was just casting South American Dota. And, you know, don't tell them, guys. Let, let me tell you, like, that, that shit's a mess over there. The Dota is chaos. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, a little bit more refined as you take that 12-hour time shift over to the other end of the earth. But Manessa going up against Execration should be a pretty good one. Again, it's been a long time, guys, so you're going to have to bear with me. Quick look at the bands. Nick's going to be taken out. Omni Knight as well. Which is, uh, and here I've been seeing a little bit more experimentation as of late. I think the big ones you gotta hit, Brewmaster and Beastmaster, both kicked out. Uh, they have a much more direct impact than some of these more premium support picks, like the Winter Wyvern, which Maneski are gonna very happily pick up for their first pick. But yeah, like, the, the impacts of a, a Beastmaster and a Brewmaster are, are very, very hard to replicate from other heroes. Four positions still wide open right now. Earth Spirit is uh, uh, definitely a hero in C as compared to some other regions. So, uh, you know, definitely looking for consideration for that hero. Night Stalker, I hear, is a pretty good hero. And we'll see what Execration actually want. You know, I'm, 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 pre I'm a pretty big fan of the Winter Wyvern. I, I feel like she was uh, a little bit underplayed in the last patch. This patch it does does get a little bit stronger, but uh, just the nature of the hero is, is rather inconsistent. Like, yeah, you have the ability to protect from physical damage, but you know what? The enemies don't have a lot of physical damage. Your, your heal isn't really going to be all that great. They don't have uh, a lot of right clicks, then the curse isn't going to be all that great either. So, yeah, that's some way of kind of playing around the Winter Wyvern. You're not going to go too hard into it. Jakiro on the Earth Spirit, the picks for Execration, and then the Night Stalker, who, yeah, I heard, is actually a pretty good hero, is going to be picked up alongside the Winter Wyvern. Definitely solving one of the Winter Wyvern's uh, more bigger problems that she can't really play super aggressively early on by herself. Definitely does need some help. Remaining. And Night Stalker is, again, probably some of the better help here. Earth Spirit with the Jakiro, the picks for Execration, obviously the Earth Spirit on that four position, Jakiro as the lane support, both sides protecting themselves as much as possible from shenanigans. This is a super safe opening from both sides of the Earth Spirit and Night Stalker. And the Jakira Winter Wyvern seems like wing supports are all the rage nowadays. But it really doesn't show anything, which is, uh, you know, the safest way to draft. It, it should be the way to draft. As far as Execration's heroes, they are enabled just a little bit more to go for some of these really big mid-game timing pushes that we see teams kind of experimenting with. Heroes like Lone Druid will be picked up, if that's actually going to be the case. Of course, with the Jakiro, you're not really forced to go into anything specifically. Uh, you can go for your Lone Druid, your Terror Blade, and just be happy with that. And try to take down those towers. You have the Liquid Fire, so you might as well. If you really want to play the late game, if you really want to go for something like an Anti-Mage and try to just stall, 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 you, know, you could actually probably get that done as well. Jakiro just has a pure lane support. Just as a, you know, maybe take a tier 1 type of support hero. It's still perfectly fine. Ice Path is, is definitely a real ability. And the ability to clear creep waves with Macro Power usually keeps yourself pretty safe from the uh, other end. Trying to play that uh, timing based push plan as well. They'll take out the Darkseer for Mineski. Darkseer is... 
I'm pretty sure Darkseer is a trash can hero right now. Like, I'm going to be honest. Uh, the hero, of course, is really nuts when you have the right combos, as in Darkseer Earth Spirit in lane, and then Darkseer Jakiro in the mid game adds, you know, a Tidehunter, or well, probably not with a Darkseer, but adds some sort of big team fight, a puck for the mid lane, let's say. And, and you got yourself a stew. But uh, the hero otherwise is. Yeah, it feels like he's a support that has to be played as core. And that's not a good combination. Still, they're going to give him a little bit of respect. I mean, the combos certainly are there for the Execration side. Metamancer and the Marana being taken out. Just got to take out these generally powerful heroes. But when I mean, we're looking at those type of heroes, like heroes that just have general amounts of power level. I mean, we still have the entire safe lane is, is, is wide open right now. Initiation, Batrider, for sure, is still in. Clockwork as well, you can go for that. If you want to go for a Legion Commander, so be it. So, I mean, despite the additional bans in this first phase, it's it still seems like it's not quite narrowing this field any by a big margin here. Nature's Prophet as well, still in the pool. Definitely a, definitely a, t a hero that is kind of on a team-by-team -team basis. I mean, yeah, if you have a Nuts Nature's Prophet player, then you're going to pick it up. But if you don't, then you're just never going to. And that's, uh, remaining. I feel like everyone needs a Nature's Prophet player. The hero is just Five so stupid remaining. what you can do. Just, your lane control is ridiculous. Your ability to help out with teleport is insane. And if you're having a decent lane, getting a fast Wrath of Nature is a huge nuke. Like, it's actually insane how much damage that can do if you're in an off-lane type situation where you're not getting pressured, you're getting a full lane of experience. You're just a solo hero getting level 6 really quickly. It's really terrifying. What does Execration want? Uh, again, it doesn't really have to be anything specific right now, so it's mostly just going to be whatever they feel like. Timing push, perhaps? No, just a puck. Try and keep themselves still wide open. I've seen puck go towards the mid lane, go towards the off lane. I do like puck off lane quite a bit here. Winter Wyvern doesn't really have much game versus the puck. Like if you see the Winter Wyvern take to the sky as Puck, you will have Phase Shift, you will have the Orb out, and Winter Wyvern can't really do anything to help actually kill you off. Night Stalker as well is kind of clunky at that. It will eventually have that silence, but uh, up until that point, you should be pretty much fine to at least get the experience out of the lane. Yes, guys, Cyclops isn't here. It's not my fault. Actually, no, it is my fault. I had him assassinated. You will never be seeing him again. I've taken over all of his casting duties. So you better get used to it because uh, this is how things are now. And you guys are too late. He's already dead and buried. So sorry to be the, the bearer of bad news here, but if you came for Cyclops, you, you came to the wrong place. Ripperino. Mineski, both sides actually taking their sweet time. Next Creation's team fight is certainly stacking up. A lot, a lot of magic here. Winter Wyvern as a defensive hero up against Puck, who should be getting a veil, is uh, you know, not not exactly an ideal situation. I wonder if they can actually go for anyone who's going to be a pipe builder. It would be insane here. Earthshaker is not that hero. Maybe going towards the offlane, most likely. We've seen Earthshakers uh, have a lot of difficulty when picked up in that third spot. Of course, there are games where Earthshaker just gets nuts out of control, is able to get his levels, able is, is able to rotate around at least as much as he's needed to. And you know, an additional stun versus an Earth Spirit and a Puck, you can never say no to that, but uh, it is inherently a risky offlane pick just by just by nature of how the hero matches up against some of his opponents. Still, that is uh, not going to be a pipe carrier. And, well, now pipe looking a little bit better. A little bit better after every pick for Execration. And Luna obviously has some pretty fat right clicks, but uh, this Eclipse... With the Puck and Jakiro is an absolutely terrifying amount of magic damage. Winter Wyvern for sure is being pretty hard counter. At least as hard as you can counter a Winter Wyvern. Like her heals, her defensive power is, is definitely going to be pared down. Thanks to this execration side going for a vast amount of magic. Still looking for an additional hero for their off lane or their mid. Depending on where the, where the Puck goes. And Mineski will pick up a Tinker. Interesting to see. I mean, Execration with this Luna will be kind of more willing to go for these kind of earlier game pushes. You will always do that when you have a Luna. At least try to go for those Ten tier 1s. And of course, they have the Jakiro as well. 
So Tinker to try to counter that is quite nice. That being Five said, the Neskis still are going to be playing a Tinker into a Puck, into an Earth Spirit. Some pretty good answers to the Tinker. Right now, Maneski is still looking for that scaling. Safe lane should be banned out here from Execration. We're going to see soon how aggressive they actually want to be. If they go for Initiation, someone like a Bat Rider, as an anti-Tinker measure, putting the puck in the mid lane, they can definitely look to make some really aggressive timing pushes. Alternatively, putting the puck towards the off lane and getting a little more damage towards the mid lane can uh, certainly be an option they go for as well. You know, those type of heroes generally aren't that great up against the Tinker. Like, you can go for an Invoker, who's usually pretty good at finding and answering a Tinker. But other than that, with the fact that the Queen of Pain has already been banned out, it's uh, you know, not, not exactly going to be all that guaranteed. Death Prophet is still in the pool, and I, I feel like Death Prophet is pretty insane now. I might be one of the few to actually think that, but uh, yeah, the, the, the Death Prophet can certainly aid these very, very heavy time push drafts. It is not really great versus the Tinker, but hey, silence Five is a silence, right? Remain. Hard to cast spells when you're in that AoE. Dude, I read chat all the time. That's probably something I do a lot more than I should because, I mean, reading chat typically lends to losing brain cells. Vengeful Spirit, the last pick for Mineski. Something that we've seen a, a lot of these EU teams experiment with is Vengeful Spirit is a very early pick. Obviously now, there's not much question. Gee, I wonder where this Vengeful Spirit's going to go. It's going to be a safe lane Venge. And along with that, Tinker is not a bad pick. And Vengeful Spirit is a hero that's probably not going to just take the reins of your entire game and carry just by herself. But she will be able to contribute a lot to that mid game. She is really, really good at causing chaos. And when you have a heavy hitter like a Tinker to kind of just back up as a Vengeful Spirit, usually you're going to be in a pretty good spot. And to hell, if you are farmed enough, it is very possible to see Vengeful Spirit with the minus armor take the uh, fight to the Luna. Most of the time, Luna should win that since she's just going to be going for, you know, pretty Luna, standard Luna items, just stat-heavy items. But uh, yeah, there is certainly a chance that uh, the Vengeful Spirit will eventually get to that point, especially with all the backup she has. Like, there is quite a bit of control and a quite, a bit, quite a bit of disable here from the Mineski side. Execration, last pick is going to be a Zeus. So, uh, yeah, a little bit more experimentation on this hero as well. Been rather impressed by how this hero has been able to perform, especially when you consider what they already have going for them, which is a Puck. Puck and Zeus works really well because you initiate and kind of form a little bit of a barrier for that Zeus with the coil. And then, of course, you just rain heaven on them. Drop all the lightning in the world. If you have the Nimbus, great. If you don't, it's not a big deal because Puck usually is going to also have a Veil. So Veil with Luna, Zeus, Jakiro... Ah, oh, that hurts, man. That hurts a lot. And Mineski, they, you know, Eventual Spirit may pick up a cloak, may pick up a hood, but uh, until she's actually going to be magic immune, is just going to be barbecued by that. And by uh, Ventral Spirit, I mean, yeah, everyone is going to be in danger. It is not a safe spot to be. So magic damage galore here for Execration. Of course, that is going to mean that the uh, Mineski side will have really easy decisions as far as what their items are. Are going to be early on pick up the raindrops when it goes into a later and later stage then you have to pick up the bkbs again i'm not really sure who's going to be picking up a pipe here if anyone is going to be able to pick up a pipe because that's just generally not the build of any of these heroes does ee -E venge pick pipe i mean if, if anyone playing carry venge would do it it would be ee -E, right and it's actually not that bad on Venge as, as a core Venge because, again, you're, you're not really going to be manhandling people as this hero until you're, like, mega farmed. So you're prioritizing survivability and just making sure you're in there for the damage aura for longer is quite nice. But uh, we got ourselves a little bit of a mix-up here for Mineski. They're going to smoke up, first of all, and the route has been drawn. Raging Pota. Looks like he missed his toe. He's going to be playing the Earth Spirit. James is on the Zeus. RR, the Puck. Everyone else is on the bottom lane. So this is really bad for Execration. Because they're going to be in a 5v2, 5v3 right now. They are pushing out. And they will find no one. But this is really bad. Because right now, the Dire Side can leave this Bounty Rune here. Not take it. And then just wait 
for some poor sucker. RR is wandering into the most unfortunate place for a puck to wander into, and he's going to get fissured and brought down. Ice is going to get the first blood. Raging Potato and James, they will actually both get out of here. Ooh, the roll almost connected onto Jabs. The TP out from Zeus will not be spotted, although they could pretty much put together what happened. This is really not what you want as a start. Uh, at creation, they're going to cap their lineup. Lumic on the Jakiro and Gabby on the Luna. Bottom lane, Ice 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 is on the Night Stalker, kind of uh, fixing the problem I was mentioning earlier. Putting the Shaker as support along with Ninja Boogie. Still can activate the Winter Wyvern as long as you have Burn, of course. It is very difficult to actually do that versus the Puck for exactly that reason. Uh, Moon is going to be handling the Tinker versus Zeus matchup, and Mushi is going to be playing that Vengeful Spirit. But uh, bottom lane, Night Stalker, fairly durable, but uh, this is a lot of damage. Luna only being level 1. Still has a lot of damage for her allies, and Ice 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 is not exactly a mobile hero. Is looking for those boots first, and you know, you gotta get those Nikes if you're actually gonna survive this lane. He's able to sidestep a roll, then most of the time he should be fine. But the vision is not really super deep here for the Night Stalker, so dodging those plays is gonna be a little bit of a difficulty. Doesn't have a get out of jail free card with a illusory orb. I hear illusory orb is pretty good. Zeus versus Tinker. This is going to be a, an aggressive nuking matchup. Not sure if Shaker can actually do that much here, especially being in the position that he's at right now. Let's we'll see what build Tinker wants to go for, how aggressive he actually wants to be. March of the Machines is going to be pretty darn good here, expecting Execration to go for you know, mid-game timing pushes. But at the same time, you're going up against Zeus, and Zeus is not exactly known for his bulk. So getting a couple points in laser, and you can certainly surprise enemy mid laners by going for, all of a sudden, a very, very aggressive kill build. Or you just run at them and right click. I mean, hey, Kaya's part of the build for Tinkers right now. So it does give you a lot of hints. So if you're looking at right click, fools, that's that's what you gotta do, man. That was really weird, actually. They're gonna boulder smash Eyesight on the bottom lane. The Night Stalker does have five wand charges, trying to rush down Raging Potato. He might get it. One more tower shot. Actually, the aggro was pulled off by Gabby. And Night Stalker, despite his bulk, is still going to go down. Really, really a shame that there's no uh, upgrade to the Stout Shield. Just a small upgrade that perhaps gives him a little bit more survivability. Or maybe an upgrade to this Ring of Protection that does the same. I don't know. It seems like that might be a good item for Ice Frog to think about. Still, he's level 3. He's getting his experience. And as a Night Stalker, that's really all you want. If you do get those levels, you'll be able to kind of make up for a rough early game start with just Rome in the first nighttime phase, coming in a minute. RR is having a lot less experience actually than Night Stalker. That's kind of surprising. I thought he would be able to get a little bit more EXP here. CS wise, Venge, Tinker on the top. Venge really doesn't have to deal with anything on this top lane. Most likely is going to be going for just the one point missile build. Maxing out that minus armor. Man, RR is getting his ass whooped by this Drake. Wyvern. There's a difference, guys, between Drakes and Wyverns. And I apologize to Winter Wyvern for calling her a Drake. Five points to anyone who can very eloquently explain the differences between Wyverns and Drakes. Oh, James. Okay, not actually in trouble if Jabs' only plan was to walk in and punch him. He probably could have gone for a little bit more RR, though. Phase shift is being held. Out of necessity, gotta dodge that magic missile, but at the same time, you're holding your phase shift means you're taking a lot of extra right clicks. And Ninja Boogie is just so persistent on this Winter Wyvern. You can see he is going for a build that is really going to maximize his offense power in lane. Splinter Blast is pretty trash versus a puck, as is Cold Embrace's defensive ability. RR looking for the Bounty Rune, can't quite get it. And this puck has had an absolute nightmare of a time, and speaking of nightmares, James is being chased by a Night Stalker. That is truly a nightmare, but has an Invis Rune, so he should be fine. No, the fade time is too long, Moon! He committed his skill points into the nuking build I was describing earlier. And Zeus is going to be the unfortunate recipient of three points of laser. This is pure damage, guys. This is a lot of damage. And Zeus, again, despite having an Invis Rune, a little bit greedy at holding it. There was no detection there. These abilities that Tinker and Night Stalker have do not give detection either. They were just able to burst him down in the fade time. Poor guy. Ice Ice is level 4 right now. 200 in the night, first nighttime phase. 
is still looking to just get a little bit more experience. You really, really want to have that urn by the time you start roaming out. If you're roaming as Night Stalker without urn, it, you're really not going to last very long out there. You need an urn or a bottle. Roll in towards Moon. He's going to get walled off. Raging Potato going to land a nice two-man stun, but the laser's here to zap down Pota. And James is going to take quite a bit of damage from the Winter Wyvern as well. And you got to applaud their efforts in trying to handle this Tinker. If you let a Tinker free farm, you will probably lose that game. But at the same time, rolling in with just an Earth Spirit with a Zeus who's only level 5, probably not the way to do it, especially when Vineski are already camping out the mid lane as Shaker and have the ability, of course, to rotate in not only the Winter Wyvern, but also that Venge. Probably something that she does probably better than most other cores is the fact that she could rotate out of her lane and have a huge, huge impact. Just by offering additional stun. RR. We'll roll out of there with the orb. It's going to be Isis Ice who's in the most trouble right now. He is very, very low, but despite having four heroes in this bottom half of the map, not able to find anything. It's a creation. Certainly struggling to find opportunities here. I mean, top lane is, is pretty ironclad. The Tinker is certainly vulnerable, but it does require some health up on the Zeus and Heroes that you try to gank the Tinker with. No. Level 6 right now. We'll see if Tinker keeps going for this or he starts mixing up this March and the Sheens at about this time. Usually you don't need that much more nuking than this. The legs are the difference. Yes, that is truth. Five points to whoever said that. The chat's going too fast. Wyverns have two legs, two wings. Drakes and dragons have four legs and wings. You can see that with Jakiro. We're learning lore here, guys. This is important. Dragonite's the same way. We are consistent with Dungeons and Dragons rules. Fissure and Magic Missile, both gonna get dodged by RR. Totally planned. And the Embrace, they're actually gonna go for this push for real. Embrace on the Siege Creep is gonna keep it swinging. They do have Vision now on the Puck Orb to the south. Jabs, looking to intercept, but it's gonna be a little bit off, I think. He's just fast enough. Mushi, Mushi actually swaps himself in. A couple of right clicks, and Puck is gonna get styled on. The Catapult is unfortunately gonna die. Rip Cardi. But the right clicks from Eventual Spirit is intense. Ice, ice, ice in the bottom lane. Speaking of right clicks, is going to just be trying to race Raging Pota, and we'll get the kill. Probably should have kept the potato there because Pota so, so far is not really working out for him. He will jam the kill home with a totally unnecessary Thunder God's Wrath. But still, the Ice 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 Night Stalker able to get a kill after uh, before his death. Extra experience for him, and hey, he was pretty much dead anyway, so the fact that he got the kill, quite admirable. RR is going to look to get this tower denied, but is fully wrapped around. He's going to silence up jabs so they can't get the Enchant Totem stun, but... Uh, they weren't really looking for that kill, they were just looking for the tower. Oh, diving in deep. Raging Pota is going to get manhandled by the Night Stalker. Fissure is a little bit off, walling off the Night Stalker. Ninja Boogie also doesn't have his burn, but James is also in the middle of nowhere. Zeus, run! Run, Zeus! There are no pipes for Hugh to jump into. There's actually not that much mana here. Uh, there will be Arcane Boots and a Fissure with a Splinter Blast that has nothing to bounce off of. Right clicks? I believe, James. Get out of there, man. Oh, Enchant Totem is off. Jabs wants this kill so badly, and he'll just die for it. Right? Embrace? Okay, he won't die for it. They also smoke him up. Would have lived either way using either of those two tools. But hey, he's alive, and that's all that matters. Zeus is not a fast hero, but hey, he gets out of there. Unfortunate Fissure on the arrival there from Jabs. Walling off the Night Stalker. If Ice Ice was on the right side, would have been a, a really easy kill there. Getting a couple more of those urn charges. Wonder when he's when or if he's gonna get this spirit vessel. It's a pretty expensive upgrade. Like it, it does take quite a bit of commitment. It does feel like it's kind of the guardian greaves to the to the mechanism. If the mechanism is urn of shadows, then vessel will be guardian greaves. It's like it's an expensive upgrade and it's worth it in certain situations. I'm not sure if this is one of those situations where you just immediately get it though. You probably wait. A long time, even probably after Ags. I just don't think the upgrade is, is quite good enough for uh, for what it does. So Tower is being chipped at level 3 in the Liquid Fire. We'll make this a slow and steady push. Luna, of course, 
Only one point in the aura right now, but is looking to play this aggressively. Dire scan is going to stay green. Mushi and Jabs wandering around from the side. This Luna does have an Eclipse right now. Is there any raindrops? Is there any way to buffer this? Not really, but there is a lot of damage here. Mushi is arriving. Gets the minus armor off as the Eclipse does go off onto the creep wave mostly. Ice 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 will survive a little while longer. They focus down the Jakiro in the meantime with an extra beam. They will take down the Night Stalker. Jabs has an extra stun. Will not cancel. And Mushi as well misclicks the swap. Can't get it onto the Luna. Mouse accuracy not quite high enough, although didn't really have much time there. Mushi is unfortunately just short of that, and the Luna will get the kill with the Eclipse and escape. Meantime, roll into the Winter Wyvern. Immediate TP out from Ninja Boogie. He should be fine. That was so close to being good, but Ice 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 playing a little bit too aggressively, a little bit too early. Like if you run out of Luna like that, you are asking for an Eclipse. And as tanky as Night Stalker is, without having something like a Raindrop or an absolutely full Magic Wand, like there's not much you can do to actually play around that Eclipse except for hope that you're fast enough to get away from it. Not gonna happen this time, unfortunately. Still, Mushi and Jabs are still here. I'm not really sure what they can do. The Tinker does have his travels, and he is kind of threatening with those, but eh, that's not really gonna work out that great. Probably is just better off farming. Get that Soul Ring, get that Blink Dagger, and be happy with that. Let's see how much farm this Venture Spirit has. Mask of Madness, the build for Mushi. Did I say pipe earlier? Screw pipe, man. You don't need that shit. We're not EE over here. Ice Ice is gonna get jumped on the top lane. Jabs is here. Does not have his level 6, though. He'll throw out a Fissure. Does quite a bit of damage to the Raging Potato, but Ice Ice actually is not gonna be able to finish the deal. We're running in. He actually will, with help of missiles from Moon. Now, laser onto RR. Still, this dot on the Earth Shaker won't quite kill him off. 15 HP. Thunder God's Wrath was already used in there. And the Night Stalker will trade his life once again for an Earth Spirit. These are not ideal trades, but swap back onto Gabby. Knowing that there is no Eclipse means that he'll take a lot of damage and Mushi will go to town. Get one kill, chasing after the dragon. Run, Lumic, run. Mushi is hot on his tail. The sickest of jukes, but the Tinker is going to see him. We'll blast down Lumic. Handful more kills for Mineski as this Venge is playing as if she were a support Venge except a very, very farmed support Venge. And that's what you gotta do on this hero. If you take this Venge, play her as a traditional carry, play her as a Juggernaut or an Anti-Mage, like, you're probably not gonna do that great. You gotta make use of her early game power. And Mushi so far is doing a pretty damn good job. Raging Potato is gonna kick the Night Stalker away. Long rollout, still Ice Ice Ice. Axed out in the Void at this point has a lot of damage. Can easily prey on these supports, and even Luna... She is fairly bulky. They obviously need a little bit of help for the Night Stalker if they're going to kill off with someone like a Luna, but it's certainly a possibility. Moon Soul Ring is up. Blink Dagger next. Wrap around. Not to Ninja Boogie, though. Yeah, this Winter Wyvern is pretty screwed. But it's only a Winter Wyvern. Bottom lane is being pushed in the meantime. Mushi will very easily clean that one up. Maxed out in the aura at this point. Plus 61 damage, Drow Ranger, eat your heart out. Why pick up Drow when you could just pick up Venge? Thinking. Night Stalker. As everyone in the sights gets spotted by a random Grievel, whatever it's called. Shield goes up, but Night Stalker can still chase down for this. Not over the trees, he can't actually already use that flight. And, well, they will all fall back. The push is going to bring the tower into deny range. What is the option to go in for that right now? If he does go for it, it will be spotted. And looks like he'll just be happy with marching the lane. Defending it that way. I mean, bottom lane, they have Mushi exactly where he wants to be. With the Mask of Madness attacking a target that doesn't fight back. At least not that much. And he will slowly but surely chip down that tower. So far, no tower is taken from the Execration side. Yet still net worth pretty close. Oh, Mushi is going to get caught by the coil on the retreat attempt. We'll get bolted down by James. Has a spooky ghost following the Zeus, which will do 100 damage. Wow. Yeah, Mushi uh, doesn't want to stay there for too long. Although, speaking of not staying for too long, RR is going to phase shift, blink out, and orb. There is no silence on the Night Stalker, but RR is actually stuck. He is going to have uh, one more phase shift, but Tinker has more missiles. And, well, Night Stalker has more fists, so RR will get blasted down. Night Stalker still not going for that one-point crippling fear. Ice 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 playing, playing this very greedily. 
I mean, up against the Luna and a Puck and an Earth Spirit, like, Crippling Fear is crippling. Shut up, guys. That's the best, that's the best adjective I can come up with. It's pretty damn good, okay? You really want that one point, but uh, opting for a little bit more of a mobility kind of scouting build here for Ice Ice Ice. Uh, it actually is going to pick up that Crippling Fear. I thought I saw him level up Hunter in the night. I, I think I'm tripping balls. There's a very high chance that I'm tripping balls, guys. I mean, shit, it's it's 6.30 in the morning. If you want a caster to say stupid shit, deprive them of sleep. And then sit back and enjoy the shit spewing out of the caster's mouth. Because it is going to be bad. Every single time it's going to be bad. Tinker, march, march, march. I don't have a visual confirmation on Moon. Abs is sitting in the jungle as well. 1,400 gold towards that blink. These towers falling. Really helping out the Shaker quite a bit. And he's not rushing the blink dagger either. He has arcane boots. He's picked them up a long time ago. Extra tower gold. Funneling into the Shaker. Gonna impact him a lot. Helps Winter Wyvern out, obviously, but uh, certainly not by as much as it helps the Shaker. Of course, Jabs is not really super safe right now. He's gonna hide in the trees. Tinker is teleporting in and just marching the wave down. But in the meantime, mid lane, Ice Ice playing some games of the tower. Where is Mushi at? He's got his Shadow Blade. Can he assassinate people by himself? Well, not when the Shadow Blade is already revealed. Ninja Boogie versus RR. That fight is gonna go pretty well for the Puck until he tags in his partner. Night Stalker is here. They silence the Puck, but silence does not work against the TP. TP out from RR will get the Winter Wyvern kill and will get it safely. Big Thunder God's Wrath, though, from the Zeus. If they were actually looking at Mushi's items, being able to spot out the Shadow Blade for free is really, really nice. Thunder God's Wrath, in that scenario, your first inclination is not, oh, what does Mushi have? It's, oh, are we going to get this Winter Wyvern kill safely? But uh, if, if they were on the ball there, we'll know about this. Detection, so far, has been pretty decent around the map, even before the Shadow Blade. Moon... He has a Blink Dagger at this point. Here come some missiles. Here come some little robots. And a lot more missiles, actually. Tower will eventually still fall. Bottom lane, Ice is Ice picking a fight once again with RR. Crippling Fear is available, but not used. And they'll take down Luna elsewhere. Mushi will. James is going to arrive with the Bail. And the Night Stalker has got a Bail. I'm a poet, and I don't even realize that I am one. Mushi with the Wave is going to be a little bit off. Has a double damage rune. He's going to push forward. Gets coiled. RR takes quite a bit of damage, but so does Mushi. He only has five stick charges right now, as they will take down RR with Ice Ice Mushi still on the run. But Moon is just sniping fools in the background, and will get a double kill. Was running around uncontested, Tinker coming out of nowhere with a chair. That's level four missiles for you, level three laser. At that point, Mushi, it was kind of just bait. Just running around looking like a tasty kill. I mean, if they get the Fendal Spirit, they're going to be happy. That is for sure. But uh, you got to pay some respects to the Tinker. Got to get on him. And of course the Luna getting jacked up somewhere over here by a double damage Ventral Spirit is not where she wants to be. I mentioned earlier Luna should most of the time be able to handle a Ventral Spirit matchup as long as she has, you know, one hero in support or Manta style or something like that. Uh, when there's a double damage rune on the Ventral Spirit and when Ventral Spirit's leading you by like 2k gold, that obviously doesn't apply. BKB the next item pick for the Ventral Spirit as we do have the Kaya on the Tinker. Mm-mm-mm. Them sweet, sweet mana reductions. Is there any mana burn here? Six, it doesn't look like there will be. But that's fine. I don't think I've so far seen Kaya to get any extra value versus like an anti-mage or anything like that. Scanning. It'll happen one day, I'm sure. RR is going to... Oh, well, they're going to blow the smoke onto the illusion. But an Echo Slam with the blank onto two is going to lock down James. He does get his ultimate off. Mushi taking quite a bit of damage as well with the curse there. Mushi now is going to get a little bit of a chance to heal, but maybe not long enough. 15 stick charges. We'll get Mushi a little bit more distance. Gabby is going to pop the Eclipse. It is going to be enough to kill off the Ventral Spirit. Uh, Tinker, though, is on the battlefield. He's going to chuck out some extra missiles. One set, second set is going to miss. Jump forward, though. Stuns onto Gabby with missiles coming in. They don't even need them. They'll take down the Luna in a full five-man wipe. That curse just to buy time. Winter Wyvern giving the Ventral Spirit just a little bit of extra sustain. And the fact that Tinker, again, is running around uncontested. A big problem for Execration. I mean, it's just a Tinker style. <laughs> if you don't get heroes on top of that Tinker, you are going to be losing that fight. There's no two ways about it. 
And Ventral Spirit, not having gone for a really tanky build, doesn't really matter because she's a level 15 bench. 1400 HP without even having this Ogre Club in the main inventory it does take quite a long time to grind through, especially when you open the fight with a two-man Echo Slam from an Earthshaker. It certainly is quite nice. Oh, hey, Spirit Vessel's picked up first. Looks like I am wrong. Keep the mouse over here for, for all you new guys out there. The, the, the change over the urn is, again, like really nice for your inventory slots. Like You do get uh, really good efficiency there. I think the, the, the big deal, though, is you really want to be like reducing uh, healing and regen, I think. You want to have some value there, and currently it's not there. But they're going to jump in towards the Earth Spirit. It takes quite a bit of damage out. Here comes Moon, though. Teleported right into the front. That's not where you want to be as the Tinker. We'll get blasted by Lightning before the Curse can come out. Tinker is down. Only for an Earth Spirit. Not quite good enough. But here comes Mushi. Lumic is running the wrong direction if he wants to live. He'll get torn to shreds. Jabs has another Blink Dagger and a Fissure. Uh, he's going to jump in for RR. But they'll switch places, actually. And Jabs is going to be on the losing end of that one. Mushi comes in. Slays. The Puff, now looking for Zeus, is going to swap himself out and end up dodging a Lightning Bolt. Not easy to do, guys. Trust me on that one. I don't know why you guys would trust me on what's easy with the Lightning Bolt easy to dodge, but you should. Tinker teleporting in like that is a dream scenario for Excretion. They don't have to do Jack. They just have to sit there, and the Tinker is kind of feeding himself up on a silver platter. Level 17, this hero is on top of the net worth chart. Probably the highest level in the game. Easily is the highest level in the game with Mushi tied, I guess. Actually, Mushi is ahead, so never mind. But is worth a hell of a lot. It's just the overconfidence syndrome. We see it with any hero that is just dominating the game. They will, most of the time, at a certain point, think that they're invulnerable and then just make plays with that assumption. Uh, but you gotta remember you're only a 1400 health tinker. You are far from invulnerable. As farmed as you may be, these are all offensive items. Uh, he's getting a blink, I guess. Kind of defensive. No extra durability on this tinker, and that won't be coming up for a very long time now. Opting for Dagon does have Ether Lens and Dagon in the quick buy. I think he's gonna mix in any of that Ags for a little bit extra bulk. Night Stalker going to work on the Earth Spirit. A lot of right clicks, though he doesn't have any soul vessel souls. What is it called? Soul release. Good creativity, Valve. I applaud you on that one. What do we call an item? What do we call the ability of something called a soul vessel? Well, I just call it soul release. <gasps> Brilliant, Johnson. You're hired. It's almost as great as Veil. You guys know what Veil's called? It's called magic weakness. Come on, Valve! Get your shit together. This is not okay. That is not okay at all. BKB on Mushi. They do have quite a bit of Roche taking power with this Ventral Spirit, but not really anyone else really wants to be in that Roche pit. Swap back onto Gabby. He does not want to be here. Mana for Eclipse, there is not enough. And they'll just beat him down. Mushi with the Master Madness is going to go to James. We'll get a double Echo Slam. We'll stun up the Puck. Ice Path is going to give RR a little bit extra time here. That won't really do anything else, though. Ventral Spirit will snap the coil, which was, I'm sure, totally intentional there for Mushi. But they will take down two heroes without the Tinker. That's just the BKB safety there for the Ventral Spirit. Moon, in the meantime, is pushing a Tier 1. And Tinker doesn't push worth a damn, but hey, it's for free. He'll get it. Ice, 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 wrapping around, giving them that vision. He's under vision himself, but seeing the Night Stalker and doing something about it, two different things for sure. The tower will fall on the mid lane and probably the top lane as well. Top tower. Luna does now have a BKB of her own. BKB and Eclipse, she could very easily turn those situations around, but there's a swap here for Mushi. Oh, this is, Mushi is playing things pretty cautiously right now. Doesn't really want to go too deep into these extra respawning heroes. Or will be going out, Ninja Boogie. We'll TP out of there, and everyone will make it home alive here for Mineski, pushing their lead now to 11k. 1800 on this 19 Pendulum Spirit. Probably just gonna go for for all the all the damage you can get. I mean, clearly she has enough damage to kill off a Zeus, who admittedly isn't the most durable, but still being able to just wander in confidently with or without BKB is a pretty big deal for the bench. 
That's her job at this stage. She's this far ahead. You may as well stay this far ahead by picking up extra damage talents. Tinker. Oh, Raging Potato. Trying to look for that Tinker. Is gonna pull to smash him. Silence him as well. Where's the backup? There is no backup. Tinker's just dead. Run, Moon. Maybe deny yourself to the dragons? No? He's dead. They got him. Finally, they got him. 70 seconds, no buyback. Though, the rest of Maneski have clearly shown themselves to be pretty damn powerful. They will catch Ninja Boogie with the coil. He's gonna dodge a silence. RR is actually stuck back there on that cliffside. They'll take down Raging Potato elsewhere. Ninja Boogie is gonna curse Zeus, try to make a break for it with the heal, but the dots are too much. Backup is coming in, but not quite fast enough. It will be a one for one as Earth Spirit got jacked up by this gank squad. With the Tinker being down, Mineski are not going to be super antsy to make any sort of big plays. Definitely cannot go for Roche. You need that lane, those lanes pushed out in your favor if you're going to be doing that, at least. I think, though, with Night Stalker being as tanky as he is, and with the Vengeful Spirit doing as much damage as she's doing, especially with this extra damage now up from the aura, uh, I'm pretty sure they can just do it with two heroes. Mushi is spotted by a sentry. Swap back onto Lumic. Oh, no BKB in time to save himself from the ice path, but the damage for Mushi, how big is it? Oh, up against the shrine, it's not going to be good enough. Is now on the run. Mask of Madness, movement speed, pretty high. There is going to be a Puck Orb giving chase. Coil there as well, but here comes the backup. Moon's going to drop some pretty big bombs as Adventure Spirit will get embraced. Save for a little while longer. Still in the back fire, though. Mushi is just refusing to go down thanks to the Glimmer and will eventually be sniped out by the Zeus, but RR in a precarious position. Actually, Orb down to the south. Moon is giving chase. He has another laser, gets silenced out of it, jump forward, echo slam onto the Zeus, just locking him down. Laser blast, they should be able to right click him down, and they will, James is gonna fall. RR still in the trees, looking to snipe, Moon jumps in, does get the kill on the Tinker, but now needs some help, and here comes the help with the haste rune, it's Gabby. Out of the woodwork, Curse is gonna slow her down, letting Ice 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 get a little more distance, Fissure, jump in on the puck, dodges the enchant totem, will blink out of there as well. Ice 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 still looking for a pretty cheesy kill here onto RR. Ninja Boogie as well. Oh, Splinter Blast! Read like a book, this puck, but the damage just isn't there. And it will be the Ventral Spirit going a little bit too deep, kind of baiting her allies into a bad situation. Of course, Tinker was able to do quite a bit of damage, but this time, unlike the previous fights, was not able to keep his distance. Was just close enough, and that's not where you want to be as a Tinker. You want to be as far away as possible. Creation. That was a fight that did not have their Luna. Arrived really, really late with the haste rune, but not hasty enough. And that's really a shame. They did have an extra hero there. Like a BKB Luna can seriously tear fools up. Or just even no BKB. Just press that Eclipse and you easily get some extra kills there. No one else on the uh, Mineski side has any magic immunity. It really only is the Venge. Okay, well now, Ice Ice has a BKB. BKB is still an all-star here for Mushi, but only if he uses it in the context of his own team. He's going to Shadow Blade up. The rest of Execration smoked up. Their angles are there for Mushi. We'll have to wrap around a little bit more. Although it does look like they may be thinking about trying to snipe a Tinker here. We'll grab an Arcane Rune. That's quite nice. For a Puck or a Luna. Or a Zeus. Zeus is good too. Looking for that Tinker, very patient play, but ultimately fruitless. Tinker level 20 at this point, getting some pretty nice talents up, but Tinker's talents aren't really, like, super OP. They're nice, but uh, they're not game-breaking. Tower will fall. Execration, doing their best to keep up in this game. But, uh, ooh, they're gonna go in for Roche. Took Nessie quite a long time to actually get here, and yeah, they do have the damage for it. Execration, though, can crash this really hard. Nimbus isn't up just yet. On the Zeus, he did already use the Thunder God's Wrath, so they can't use it to scout. Mucci with, with the Mask of Madness, with Ninja Boogie to tank up. He does have the Medallion as well. This Roshan should be cleared out before this smoke arrives, especially if RR using the Orb to clear the Creep Wave. Does have an Aghanim Scepter Dream Coil. Mushi is going to grab the Aegis. Roll in, though. Onto the Earthshaker. Gets kicked out of safety, but Moon's in a very so safe spot right now as a Tinker. They do curse up the Earth Spirit. Jump forward. Echo Slam will crush the Puck. 
Mushi now hunting forward for more. Moon's gonna start firing out those missiles. Mushi on the hunt for a Raging Potato will get obliterated by the magic missile damage. Now Lumic in their sights. You cannot escape the Night Stalker. I'm sorry, Jakiro. You're just dead. Zapped down by the Dagon. And that will be a three for one. Earthshaker, yeah, got initiated upon pretty hard, but still was able to get that Echo Slam off. But again, it's the fact that Moon, I think, literally took no damage in that fight. That makes the big difference there. Mushi also getting away with the BKB, uh, with the uh, Aegis, still has BKB. Was not needed. Execration's initiation a little bit too heavy on a hero that doesn't matter quite enough in that Shaker. Moon's gonna get Nimbus. Really, really great anti-tinker tool. But uh, at, a, at this point, you gotta worry more about how you're gonna deal with the other four heroes than the Tinker split push. That's just a minor component of this particular game. Swap back on Gabby. He does not have a BKB. He does have a kick from Raging Potato, but it's not gonna do enough. Oh no, that is real bad. Mushi's gonna get quite a bit of extra juice back thanks to that Winter Wyvern heal. Still has that BKB even if she didn't. And with the Soul Vessel, well, Soul Release could have made a pretty silly heal there if they timed it right. Oh, Lumic, Laser Blast, Dagon Missiles. Almost 100 to 0, and Mushi still just going for the tower in the meantime. Ice 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 charging forward. The Tinker is in a pretty precarious position right now. Is Ice Ice going to pop the BKB? Just try to chase everyone back, letting Mushi do the damage versus the structures. Tinker, though, is in a bad spot. He is going to get embraced. Magic damage is kind of going to stop here on the Tinker. Not quite enough, but it will get the kill eventually. The Puck is going to get frozen in place. Mushi with the BKB just still going for the racks the entire time. He has not hit a single hero. Now he's going to go in towards Raging Potato with a pretty heavy set of right clicks. Will get a kill there. Now on the way out, Aegis still on Mushi. Looks like it may get popped here. Embrace for the Winter Wyvern. Can't be cast just yet. Mushi has a magic missile. Is going to go straight for the puck. The damage is huge. And it will be enough to we'll drop the puck really low. Not quite enough to get the kill, though. Mushi with the Embrace is still going to hold on to the Aegis, though. Nimbus now up in the skies. Mushi gets bolted a couple times and will lose that first life. But it's only her first life. And now here comes the pissed off ghost. No way. Is it actually going to do something? No, it won't. Mushi should be able to back off and survive, but the damage has been done. Execration are able to get quite a few kills off of that because Vineski aren't really looking for a fight. They're just looking for the racks. They do get away with it. That was a really weird play for Tinker to go up on the high ground like that. As Tinker, that's like the last thing you really want to be doing. But uh, you know what? Anything for the, for the cause, for the greater good. Mushi is still absolutely dishing, versus those structures in particular. Almost is at that level 25 mark as the Vengeful Spirit. Magic Immunity, there's only one Magic Immunity tool on the other end. Plus 400 damage is pretty ridiculous. Hey, nothing like a Laguna Blade on a 10 second cooldown, am I right? This Luna is having a really rough game. Despite her farm, it doesn't ever really feel like the Eclipse and BKB is being used at uh, at the same time in a team fight. Always being isolated and picked off first thing. Oh, hello. That's a new item. Not Sacred Relic, what he's building into. Nullifier on Luna on Earth. Oh, God. That is... Oh, that is so good here. Oh, man. I mean, everyone, when they saw Nullifier, was like, yeah, it's a good item, but it's very situational. Muting the enemies. Uh, doesn't really do anything versus Zeus, nor Jakiro, but it destroys the Luna. It destroys the Puck also. Oh man, that's good call by Ice Ice Ice. First time seeing, or first time for me casting with the Nullifier. Show me some Nullification. And Valve, it better have a sick, it better have an absolute sick activated builder name. Nullify. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I can't really say anything bad about that one now, can I? It's uh, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the nullifier, what does it do? Guys, it nullifies. <laughs> yeah, turns out that's how it works. Four heroes positioning down towards bot lane. Two of them being invis capable. Tinker, of course, can travel in at a moment's notice. Going for that second set of racks. Mushi just needs a little bit of sight. Is gonna mask of madness. Takes a lot of damage. Needs some help. The magic damage is too much. Mushi, Mushi. This mask of madness berserk didn't even kill him there. It's the fact that he just wandered in by himself. They're looking for a curse on the back line. Fissure. Not gonna do them any favors. Ninja Boogie is stunned up. Will keep the Luna out of this fight with the curse. We'll try to fly away with the Glimmer Cape. There is also a pipe here on someone. 
Where the hell is that pipe? It's on the Witch Wyvern herself, actually. They're gonna jump on the Tinker who jumped in first. Tinker, why are you doing this? Why are you breaking my heart? That is not cool. They're gonna bolt him down as well, and so far, very little damage being done. Ninja Boogie gets four staff closer as Lumic uses it offensively onto this Winter Wyvern. Is now surrounded. Phase Shift won't do them any favors there. Ninja Boogie for sure is gonna fall now, looking for the Earth Shaker now, as RR with right clicks will not have the true sight. The bolt is gonna give them another flash of vision. There's a gem though on the puck. Never mind. Able to snipe it from the Night Stalker. No, there's just a there's just a gem. They just bought a gem for the puck. That's a four kill. It's Mineski, yet only the Earth Spirit. And that is just a uh, textbook example of what not to do when you're pushing the high ground. Because Ventral Spirit just literally suicided. The bolt stuns from the Nimbus. And that that kind of just destroyed the Ventral Spirit there. And they don't have a ton of stuns, but just between the Earth Spirit and the Zeus, I mean, that was, seems like it was just enough. Tinker blinking in afterwards, after having lost your Ventral Spirit? Uh-uh, guys. You, you don't want to do that. That is not a good idea. That was Execration finding a free opportunity on Mineski as they quite greedily try to push up high ground without any backup. If you have an Aegis Cheese, which should be coming up pretty soon, a minute at least, then yeah, go for that. But with no extra backup, they don't have... Well, I mean, they have a swap save, I guess, but they don't have any save for Mushi. Again, this is not a game where Embrace is really going to be doing all that much. Gives you a little bit extra health regen. But outside of that, like, you're just taking so much magic damage. Even a Glimmer Cape and Pipe on the Winter Wyvern is just not enough. You need, like, an Oracle if you're going to actually survive that type of magic damage. Mineski drop a really big fight there. The Nullifier is up, plus they have a BKB on the Tinker. Big items to have. But for right now... Expiration do get a little bit of a breath of life. Still being a Rax down, not a really huge issue. Having a Luna on their side, she can deal with super creeps like nobody's business. Of course, can split push these other lanes with her illusions as well. Pretty easy for her to do. They are kind of hunting for this Luna. I don't think they're ever going to find her. This Winter Wyvern is actually extraordinarily farmed. Of course, all the towers being dropped. Roshan in their favor as well. Certainly doesn't hurt. Plus the 90 gold per minute talent. Pretty darn good. She's going for pure magic immunity. Unfortunately, at this point, she's pretty much topped out as far as helping her allies is concerned. What would you get next for Winter Wyvern? I mean, you just upgrade this to the Solar Crest. Keep yourself uh, kind of item slot efficient. Gabby. Taking a little bit of harassment here from Moon. She is pushing forward right now, under cover of Invis, is going to find Lumic in the trees. Will Magic Missile the Jakiro force that forward and just destroy him? Actually got the Pierce's spell immunity, only onto the Luna with that BKB. Still is enough to kill off the Jakiro, that's for damn sure. Now shifting down towards the bottom lane. James, there's no swap range, it's gonna be close, gets the swap back. Mushi though, almost gets force staffed into the fountain. The Night Stalker gonna go to town onto the Zeus. The Nimbus is up in the sky, and the Night Stalker will stun himself up against that Ag's coil. In the meantime, Mushi is hunting for Earth Spirit, can't quite find him. Vessel onto the Zeus with the sole release of the missiles. Should be enough to take him down. Gets nullified just for shits and giggles. And I think that may have. No, that actually didn't do anything, but sure, why not? That's two heroes down, the rest of Mineski. Not really with the wealth of mana, Mushi in particular. Level 25, man, it's time to get some clarities, right? That's about that time. Nimbus is still holding for right now. Mid lane is pushing in. One from Neski, though. They'll just go for Roche. That's a much easier objective for them to take. Real difficult to push up the high ground with no mana here on Mushi. Not enough mana for a swap. Probably means you're not going to get away with the fight. They'll take a shrine on the way to help that Roche on go a little bit safer. With no Zeus for 57 seconds. Should be a pretty free roll on this Roche. Again, Mushi doesn't have a lot of mana right now. Looks like he's going to opt to Shrine up first. Having mana just for those extra wave of terrors, I mean, that's still where a lot of the damage from Metal Spirit is coming from, so I may as well go for that. There's the wave. There's the minus armor. Ice is ice is tanky as all hell. Plus does a lot of damage. 49% bonus damage. You get 60 from the Nullifier 65. 
Which I can see how much is actually just straight from the aura. I have to wait till they're out of range. 245. Oh my god. That's like 100 damage. That's more like 80 damage. But still, that is a sick amount of damage from Mushi's talented aura. Insane. Night Stalker very frequently falls behind in the right click department. All oh, Sentry is going to spot Mushi. Two man coil is there. Mushi's gonna BKB swap. That's gonna stun him though. They still don't realize that there's an Aghanim Scepter on this puck. They can't kill him though, because he has evasion. He has the Aegis. They'll take down the Jakiro, but now Mushi's BKB is down. Force that down to the low ground. Looks like this time they'll be able to save their Ventral Spirit as Rage and Potato. Trying to get some CC done. Not gonna happen. Here comes the broken combo. Spirit Vessel heal plus that heal from the Winter Wyvern embrace. Suddenly Mushi's at full HP. That is value. The Chira was sniped out, and by now, the Messi gotta know that, hey, this puck has had an Aghanim Scepter for like the past 10 minutes. We should probably not snap the coil. It's a really bad idea. They will still set up for this bottom lane push. Side lanes being dealt with by the Tinker. Has picked up a full Dagon 5 by now. Item slots starting to get a little bit crowded here for the Tinker. But that's fine. Still with the rearm changes. You can still do pretty much whatever you want to do, despite being full six slotted. Oh, here comes Nimbus onto the Venture Spirit, taking a lot of damage, a lot of damage. Gets Glimmered. Rage Potato's not going to get burst down. Coil now onto three. Mushi still has this Aegis. They really want to cheese it out right now. Vessel release is not going to heal Mushi by enough, but with a beam, Mubi dropped. Again, Aegis taken for free. That's a Venture Spirit down. One of her two lives. The cheese in backup. Ice Ice is going to pop the BKB. Coil being down. Opens the door quite wide here for Maneski to put in some chip damage onto this tower, but with no extra safety, no more Aegis on the Ventral Spirit, I'm not really sure if it's worth sticking around, although they'll lift up the Puck and we'll be able to get on top of them with the Nullifier as well as the Magic Missile Puck. What are you doing there, bro? Is just going to get obliterated out of his base. March, march, march. Mushi now looking at the tower, though, with the Nimbus taking so much damage. He's going to get 100-0 person again! Can they deal with Moon? He has a BKB up. They do nullify Gabby. They'll split it off with the Manta style. Ice 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 in a little bit of trouble. Fissure is going to give him a little bit of cover, but the Ice Path is going to land. And with the dots on him, should be going down, and he will. A little bit of damage onto Raging Potato with the Luna Illusions, but definitely not enough. Rolling forward, looking for more. We'll maybe catch this Winter Wyvern. Another slow roll in. Lift up the Winter Wyvern. She is looking pretty screwed right now. Poor, poor Winter Wyvern. Another Ice Path and another kill. Mineski just can't push up this lane. Maybe it's time to like push top lane because this bottom lane situation is not working out for them. The Ventral Spirit actually needs a heart. He's gonna go for Satanic, just any sort of huge bulk item so that she doesn't get 100 to zeroed because she is just getting destroyed by the bolts of the Zeus. Man, I mean, <laughs> normally magic damage, like it kind of tends to fall off. But with Aghanim Scepter, with Magic Weakness, <laughs> Magic Weakness, and now Kaya, Spell Amp, how much actually does he have? He has 18% Spell Amp. Yeah, with cooldowns and such being uh, at an all-time low here. That is so much magic damage. It does feel like Vengeful Spirit just needs a hood. Needs some flat percentage reduction there. Like, BKB is great, but it only lasts 5 seconds at this point. If you do have a hood, I think she she probably survives there, and at least it's time to get the cheese. She's actually getting hunched to zero, and that is not a good situation for Avenge to be in. Execration still. Despite winning just a handful of fights. Oh, they're going to maybe find Ice is Ice here, though. He's going to BKB. It will nullify. It will give chase after the Earth Spirit, but Yule Scepter will buy himself a little bit extra time to roll out one more, more time. Thunder God's Wrath giving them full vision. And he will roll out to safety. Because, you know, four seconds rolling boulder seems pretty good. Sometimes you gotta go fast. And the nullifier is pretty good, in theory still, but Manta style BKB on the Luna. You gotta make sure you actually nullify her like at melee range. So that she can't get out of it. And you also have to get through the Lincoln Sphere. You know, Nullifier would stop a Lincoln Sphere if it is just cooling down, but it is it should still be blocked by a Lincoln's. Unless there's some weird mechanic here. 
You gotta make sure that someone else on your team is able to pop that spear first. Such a situational item. Like, all these point-click debuff items. Orchid, Bloodthorn, like, they... They just are gonna have those problems up against uh, magic community and just items in general. Okay. Mineski are gonna take my advice and go for top lane instead. They do see a Puck, though the Puck is going to see them. Fast Orb rolling through. Puck does have the 420 gold per minute. Oh, never Dream Coil Rapid Fire. Feels bad, man. His build is pretty bad for it <laughs> right now with his items, but I want to see it, man. It pretty much just lets you just super right-click into whoever's coiled. It's pretty sweet. Mushi looking for the swap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you don't have an Aegis. You only have a cheese. I'm not really sure if swapping away from your Glimmer Cape is really what you want to be doing right now. Super late game Venge. Super late game Tinker, yet still they're having trouble breaking this base. They do have a very long range initiation tool in the swap. Mushi, Secret Agent, is looking to go in on Trading Pinup, but immediately he blinks out of there. Great reaction as they do drop the Nimbus onto the Night Stalker. He has a BKB, so he should be fine for a little while longer. They'll take down a ward. I think that was... That's that's pretty much it. Now roll forward. Coil onto two. Mushi does have maybe the chance to get the cheese. Oh, but gets kicked out of the coil. So it's snapped. He's stunned there the entire time. And now pops BKB. He will absorb the Eclipse with it. Now looking for the puck. Will miss the magic missile as the Eclipse is being used to chase after Ninja Boogie. Now I'm not sure if they really want to do that as the Echo Slam goes off to the back line. Hitting onto three. But there's just not enough damage there. They'll take down the Zeus at the end as Vengeful Spirit is going to be released. From all that CC, now looking for the puck, we'll grab the kill there as well, with the next official will kill off the Jakiro. Chasing forward, looking for that Luna, where did she get off to? In the base, she will escape. But the saves are there, and the Echo Slam from Jabs coming back in. Not had those in the past couple fights, swap into an Enchant Totem, and Mushi's gonna eat his cheese this time. It's good for you, it's Calcium. They do take down an additional hero. Jakiro is down for 90, no buyback, but Moon is in a little bit of trouble himself. Spell Vamp is not going to do it. 99 seconds. The Puck is going to return to this fight. Gets lifted up into the air. Going to dodge the Nullify. Where is this Ventral Spirit? She's coming in from the back. They do fissure up the Puck. Trying to beat him down with the Night Stalker. They will almost have enough to do it, but they don't. Level 2 travels now as Moon is going to make his return, but he's not... That durable, he's taking a lot of damage here, but gets the permahex onto Gabby. BKB does come up onto the Luna as the Tinker does botch his combo. The right clicks from Mushi. But is it gonna be enough? Turn around, the race is real! And the Luna is dead to the ghost! She's dead to the ghost, and Moon was there to jam the kill home anyway. The only survivor here is the Tinker, who doesn't push at all. Does Venge have level 2 travels? No, she only has level 1, but there's a creep wave in the base. Luna's gonna buy back. 90 seconds, but she's up against the full force of Mineski with a swap to initiate. I don't think Luna can do this by herself. She needs someone else, but there is no one else. GG is called, and Mineski finally, finally, finally break the base. Jump in from Raging Pota as his final act. At least he's not gonna die. Neski are going to claim victory. Yeah, guys, Rapid Fire Dream Coil sucks. I just want to see it. I know it sucks. It's just so bad. <laughs> That's not what you want to do as Puck. You're 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 not that type of hero. Uh, Mineski, though, the big change in that last fight compared to what happened previously. Jabs was able to land not only an Echo Slam but an Echo Slam on three. The stun lock was there and separated the fight just enough. So that Mushi can get his damage done. I mean, he's got Butterfly, he's got Shadow Blade, he has all these extra items. Can definitely use that extra cover and not able to nuke down the Ventral Spirit. 100 to 0, not able to nuke down Moon. Is going to give Mineski just that one fight they need to break the base. This is game one for the Summit 8C Qualifier Semifinals, guys. Game two is going to come up in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere.